Hello, good morning everyone. Charles McNamara here, Director of Operations at Guardian Group Services. Uh, really looking forward to today's episode. Uh, I just want to thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, do all the cool stuff cool kids are doing today. Um, today, folks, uh, I got a treat. A little different than what we normally do. Um, on today's episode, I have uh, something you might be interested in. And for those individuals who take our security training, our fire safety training, our self-defense training, on today's episode, uh, we have the folks at Mantis Tech. Um, they bring state-of-the-art analysis and um, computing technology and, and tracking to the firearm industry. Uh, I was lucky enough to get a demo and a sample a couple of months back. As you know now that we are doing um, some self-defense training, we're doing some weapons training. And if you want to book a class, you can obviously do that on our website, guardiangroupservices.com. Uh, today's episode, can't wait to jump into it. Already had a chat with them in the morning. Um, really, really great gentleman, Jake. What's up? Good morning. How you doing? Charles, how are we doing today, man? Thank you so much for having me here. I really appreciate it. It's so funny. Like I said in the beginning, I always get the jitters and I do this, you know, for a living. It's pretty funny. But, uh, uh, no need to be jittery with me, man. We'll just shoot it straight and, and be able to tackle everything you want to talk about today. I think we're going to do all the weapon puns today. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing, you know, I got to say right off of the bat, um, Hands down, Mantis, uh, the whole team, great customer service and great uh, support, very helpful. I called, I didn't know really what I wanted um, exactly because we started to get into the concealed carry training. Um, I wanted to be able to offer something, and this is like in the middle of COVID, something to supplement training um, for those individuals who do live fire. Uh, you know, the ranges were not open um, right. in New York City. New York City you know, has some of the uh, most strict gun laws around town, which I think everybody kind of knows about that. But um, I spoke with Austin, and Austin's so great, literally held my hand all the way through. He says, hey, we've got this product. It's a great product. You got to check it out. Sends it to me. I download it on the phone, which we'll get into today. Um, great platform. You know, it's been upgraded a few times. And the Laser Academy program. Uh, just insane, blew my mind. You know, I I became like a stats person over the years, and it's just amazing what you guys are doing uh, with your platform. So you. I got a whole bunch of questions here. I got papers all over. I got notes all over. Uh, I know that you, you know, fly off the handle, but, um, you know, I, I actually have one here, and I was uh, able to get one of these uh, weapons from Next Level Training, but very simple. Yep device can hook to up to your weapon of choice or a laser cert pistol. Um, so Jake, I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about your background, where you're from, what you do with the company, uh, yep. and how did you get uh, connected with Mantis? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, my background is both software and um, and firearms. So I had, uh, I had spent some time in the United States Army. Um, uh, before that, I grew up in the Black Hills of South Dakota, where uh, it's a very firearm centric community up there. Lots of hunting, lots of shooting in general. Um, so I, I grew up with a passion for both software and uh, and firearms. Um, and after getting out of the army, uh, did some more software stuff for a couple of years. Uh, wanted the ability to bridge both of those passions and be able to do firearms and software together. Um, and uh, Mantis gave me the opportunity to do that. So that that's kind of how I ended up working here. Um, and then um, now I, I kind of I wear a couple hats for the company. So um, I do some of the support team and some of the uh, client services, um, and I'm also the can the state of Kansas's uh, sales rep. So um, I get to do a, a couple things here and, and really help out the company as as many ways as I can, honestly. Um, so that that's kind of that's how this whole thing got going and and how I was able to get on board with the team. That is awesome. You know, I, I can't believe it. Like I said, like the, it's such a small device. It's something literally you can throw in your pocket um, and either, you know, do this at home, at work. Uh, I'll, I'll show everybody a funny video. Uh, just got to make sure my boss is not looking around because I, I spent a lot of company time just kind of practicing around the office. Had a whole bunch of coworkers kind of walk in and laugh like, oh, what is this guy doing? Um, <laughs> the training is so important. Um, I, too, was in the military. And I just want to thank you for your service. 
You as well. Thanks, Charles. You know, uh, I think my training and background much more into long guns and, and rifles. Um, you know, I've, I've shot a pistol a few times, so I'm thinking I'm going in, you know, bang, 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 bang. And I realized how bad I was, um, you know, been almost two decades since I served, you know, I'm in, in my mid forties now. Um, you know, I'm not a teenager anymore, but <laughs> you know, one of the things I really liked about your platform, you know, talks about, you know, the firearms rules of safety, right? For those that don't know, um, very, very important. You're going to get this drilled into you. You got to know this. You got to know this. You got to know, uh, you know, you have to treat every firearm as it's loaded, right? Never point the muzzle at anything you're not willing to destroy. Uh, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot and know your target and what is beyond. I recently took, uh, the concealed carry weapons course myself. And, you know, I was very impressed with how much they train those rules. Um, you know, people kind of know them and then they forget them. But as I spoke to many people in this industry, they can recite it like that. Um, yeah. And I think that part of the training is so important. Well, so, and, and so I'll hop in on that too, Charles. And, um, and I'm sure you've, you know, we'll bring it up here in a bit or at least show some of it, but, um, you know, rule number one, um, always, you know, whatever you're pointing the muzzle at, be willing to destroy. That's that's what the algorithms that run the software is is completely, you know, based upon. Mm -hmm. uh, that sensor, the the way it's designed, is it creates a 3D graph, essentially, a, you know, a, a 3D space around whatever firearm it's, it's put on, and and the way that it works is that it's constantly live tracing the end of that muzzle. So. Um, you know, that's, that's the point of it. That's why you don't have to have any special targets. That's why there's no special lasers to make this work. You know, yeah. um, it, you can use our smart targets with it. They make fantastic targets to use when you're in the house. Um, but yeah, the, the way that the sensor works is, is it's constantly live tracing the end of that muzzle. Um, and that's based off of the very first principle is, you know, um, don't point your gun at anything. You're not willing to destroy it. So. Um, it's fun that we get to start that way because um, typically when I do my demos and I talk about how the software works, that's where we start is um, it, it's constantly watching that muzzle. Um, and then as you pull the trigger, it's got algorithms to detect uh, what was a hammer strike versus a reload versus, you know, um, running the safety. So it, it knows the difference between all those things. Yeah, it's so cool. You talk about the targets, you know, I, I have one on my desk and it's funny when clients walk in or students walk in like, hey, you know, what's that? And it's always a great conversation starter. Like, Hey, you know what? Let me show you what it does because we can practice in our office. Yep. Uh, the cleaning staff at nighttime think, you know, like what do they got going on in there? But, <laughs> uh, you know, we do keep everything secured and you know, it, it attaches and detaches very easily as you see, I got one flying right off my desk. Um, but they also do fit most holsters as well, which I thought was really, really good, um, for training. I didn't have to really go super all in, um, but a really quality product on how easy it is to, to set up. Literally, you just um, attach the device, download the software and have at it. So day, day one in the first hour, uh, I was in, we started our own little group, me and the owner going back and forth, you know, who's got more shots for the day. And, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts, Jake, on the importance of training and concealed carry training for our viewers. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's, there's a couple of different, a uh, couple of different ways you can begin to think about this. Um, number one is, um, your protection, your own protection is, is your responsibility. Um, you know, that's something that we like to stress a lot and that's why we push training so much and why we want so many people trained. Um, so first and foremost, um, that's the the number one reason why it's so important to to become proficient is because your own protection is your responsibility. Um, so so really, um, we'll start there. Secondly, um, as you become proficient protecting yourself, you come you you know grow and become a better shooter. Um, then you're going to have the ability to start protecting others around you as well. So um, truly, uh, some of the most important things about being a concealed carry holder is is knowing that you get to become a guardian you're going to be able to guard yourself, your family, those closest to you. Um, and in the worst scenarios, um, some, some people that are around you in a situation, um, you know, I, I know, and, and, and I'm not sure it, how much we want to dig into this, but obviously here recently, there was obviously a horrible, uh, shooting up in Maine 
and and had we had more people trained more people proficient and and ready to protect those that they loved and those around them um i really don't think that would have gotten nearly as out of hand as it was you know um the police as much as we love them and we want to support them um they aren't able to make it there as soon as that first round is fired you know there, there is a gap of time before they can respond to a situation um, and being your own first responder and and a protector and guardian for your own people um, that's why it's it's paramount and so important to be able to understand how to you know reliably and effectively uh, use your equipment and your and your tools of of defense correctly and and quickly yeah i, I definitely agree for the majority of i kind of look at it in two different lenses i kind of always look at it as the director of operations, because I, I deal with students and, you know, they're coming to me, you know, I, I want to take training and most people have that same sentiment where they want to do this training to protect themselves first um, and their family. Uh, and, and I totally believe everybody should have that ability. Um, when we get into training, I know everybody has different ideas about um, this kind of training. Um, you know, what's the proficiency um, in New York State? You know, there's a 18 hour class. And then at the end, you have to hit like four out of five targets. I kind of tell everybody it's not really a shooting class. It's more of a mindset. Um, definitely get into the legal aspects, storage, weapons handling. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like the base foundation. Next question I got for you. Uh, what are the key elements individuals should consider when choosing a concealed carry training program. I know that you do some stuff online. I was muted, sorry about that. Some of some of the, the things that you really want to take in consideration when you're looking for a program is what, what level of shooter are you are you at right now? How comfortable are you? Um, you know, are, are we trying to go out and, and take uh, John Korea's advanced pistol class right out of the gate or have we ever taken any training at all? Maybe we just need to go get a state certification first. Um, look, look local first, right? Look who's at home, who knows the state laws, who's who knows the local laws, who can help you out the most at whatever level you're you're starting at. Um, another thing I would add to that is um, have you know have a base foundation of understanding and competence and comfortability before you even start looking for a class, right? Um, that's that's why we exist. Why you know our company mission is to train a million shooters a year. Um, we hit that mission, and we have been for the last you know three or four years, and um, uh, we want to continue to push that number. Um, so if you're on the ropes and you don't know necessarily which way you want to go yet or how you get started, something like the Mantis X series, like the X10 that you have, Charles, would be a fantastic start. Uh, it's a free app to download. You know, um, if you don't own a firearm yet, you can use it on like an airsoft pistol or a cert gun like you have um, and really become a little bit more familiar um, and, and consistent before you need to reach out to someone local to you who knows state and local laws to be able to help you get through that training. Yeah, you can definitely bring up a, a good point about just being comfortable. Um, and then I can't wait to show the practice video. I think everyone's going to get a real chuckle out of it. Um, but yeah, you know, the app. I opened this up when I, when I downloaded it. So I'm like, okay, let me just kind of figure out, um, you know, it's got a daily challenge. Um, so for today, if you have the, the Mantis X app, your, your daily challenge is um, getting in the prone reload at a battery. So the nice thing about this platform, if you're not sure what you should train, it's going to tell you. And the drills on here are amazing. And you have courses as well, which I thought was really cool. You have the introduction, uh, which talks about the firearm rules and safety, basic marksmanship, which I did okay. I finally passed that. Um, advanced marks marksmanship, I passed that. I'm now stuck on the elite marksmanship. Um, so, you know, every single day I'm, I'm getting my reps in, but it's got uh, so many different drills, so many different um, challenges, and you can put yourself through a course great thing about it you don't have to worry about traveling to the range you can really really build up a good skill set um for training you gotta get yeah. one of these yeah exactly. one of these. Uh, yeah and it's free, right? the app is free right yeah and, and 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 if anyone who's listening right now is curious about it or kind of wants to understand you know what charles is talking about as far as what are these courses we're talking about what you know what's the course of fire what's 
uh, you know, what are these drills com comprised of and, and how do I understand some of this better? The app is free. You can go to the app store right now on, on any major provider um, and, and go download it and check it out for yourself. So you can actually see what what's available right out of the box. Um, the only thing you need to buy from us is the hardware. You know, we'll, we'll never ask you for subscriptions or anything like that. Um, and and just as you noticed, uh, noted as well, Charles, we have a daily drill. Yeah. So you can get through your courses, you can become more familiar and proficient. And, and then if you're worried about training getting boring, uh, don't worry about it because there's something new to do every single day on the application. I, I For me personally, um, I hated the 90 degree drill. Uh, literally, you know, going this way, going that way, going this. I was amazed on how bad I did, which is good. Um, you know, you kind of, it'll definitely show you your flaws. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's good and bad thing about it. You, know, you can't have an ego when you're practicing with these. Well, that's, um, you know, that's that's the first thing we like to tell people is like, first and foremost, this is going to tell you why you're, why you're missing shots so bad is, um, mm -hmm. Um, you know, we're going to be able to break down what's what's sucking so bad about um, your fundamentals, which, you know, that's the point. Shooting is a perishable skill. So um, this really is designed to push you and show you your own flaws so that you can grow and become a better shooter. You know, um, like I said, I originally, for me personally, uh, I wanted something to do, especially during COVID. Um, perishable skill, as you guys will see in the video, how bad I was and how I progressed over the, the days and months. But It'll also show you the draw, right? You know, how you're pulling out, how you're um, aiming on target. Um, I didn't realize too, because I recorded myself, how many times I flagged myself during training. Now, if that were a live firearm, that could be a serious problem. Yeah. Uh, so what are some things, you know, we emphasize on safety and responsible gun ownership? Yeah. Yeah, so so some of the things you will note, um, and, and I'm sure you saw it as well, Charles, is as you begin drills, as you connect to the app for the first time, um, every time you get it open and get and connected to your firearm and, and get ready to go, you know, there's always notifications saying, hey, make sure your muzzle is pointed in a safe direction, make sure that your chamber is clear. Um, so it, it's not only, you know, we, we have seen some things online where folks are like, wow, this system seems like a really good way to put a hole in your house, you know, or something like that, or, or hurt you know, family that's at home. Um, so there, there are built in steps at, at every point, uh, as you connect up, as you get ready to train saying, you know, ensure your muzzles empty, ensure you're training in a safe direction. Um, you know, all based off of that very first gun rule that we had talked about initially was, you know, uh, be willing to destroy anything you point the muzzle at, you know, it really keeps in mind constantly saying, Hey, this is what's going on. Make sure that you're doing it correctly. Um, you know, and, and that's that's more responsible gun ownership and safety than it is, you know, protecting protecting ourselves in some type of lawsuit or something like that. Um, anywhere you go in the industry, no matter what it is, if, if it's your local gun shop, if you're going to a big show, if you're going to a training class, um, you know, using us at home, any of those things, it's constantly pushing you, um, always saying like, hey, did you make sure that was cleared before you handed it over the counter? Did you make sure that there wasn't anything in the magazine before you started training? Um, you know, there, those rules are constantly set in. It's it's prevalent throughout the industry. That's something I'm so proud of. Of you know, a lot of people in the industry is is, is how safe we we aim to be and how how much we want to push others to be responsible gun owners. It, it's funny you say that too, because as I was getting ready just to take my um, concealed carry class, you go down a rabbit hole on YouTube and and you watch how many mistakes um, people make, um, especially uh, when they're going into to gun shops or uh, you know trying to purchase their weapon for the first time. And I am a big believer, if you're not sure, just ask. Um, you don't need to go in there all macho and gun ho yeah. uh, Also, if you're going into someone's training space or store, you got to remember it's, it's their space. Um, you know, they're going to have certain rules that they want followed for safety reasons. Um, but it's just amazing to see how many bad things are out there. Um, well, and, you know, to that point, it's, it's funny to be able to go online and, and see, you know, like some of these very clearly, you know, couch trained hardcore operators that are constantly making mistakes or watching the guy unholster and shoot himself in the leg, you know, kind of like you were saying, um, some of the, you know, initially you laugh at it and you're like, ha, ah, what an idiot. But then, you know, it, it immediately, it kind of, it's another awakening moment. It's like, you know, wow. Um, 
this is why this is why we constantly drill safety and responsibility is because it's that easy it's that easy to hurt yourself it's that easy to hurt someone else it's that easy to destroy someone else's property so um it's definitely one of those deals where like yeah you can get a quick chuckle out of it but use all of those as learning you know use all of those to push yourself and be like ah this is why this is why i double check every time before i hand it over this is you know uh th those are the things you got to keep in mind as you do this I'm, I'm a big believer in learn from other people's mistakes so you don't make them yeah yeah exactly um in, in my training class um recently this was emphasized so much you know train the problem right you know if you don't feel comfortable holstering um train right train it keep going and train if you're not used to shooting you know 10 yard targets train uh you know go forward go backwards get used to different distances get ready to uh train on the move i think a lot of individuals get you know sidetracked and that in that box where it's like you know every encounter is going to be i'm standing static on a range and every encounter is like this and it is not <laughs> you have to kind of you know be um physically fit and mentally fit as well if you're going to be in that situation yeah absolutely um another question that we had um legal aspects you know we live in a litigious society especially uh, in new york um uh, things pretty much all in uh, the united states but um what are the legal aspects and responsibilities that concealed carry permit holders need to be aware of yeah um this this is a great one so um I, and i know i i can kind of think of the conversation we had um a couple weeks ago getting ready for this podcast when we were when we were talking about some of these things i was kind of baffled at, at some of the things that you know you have to deal with out in brooklyn and new york and um and what you have to be able to go through whereas out here in kansas um this is a constitutional state so i really you know um, i don't have to do really much legally outside of whatever our state laws are you know um, which out here you know it's 18 years old to own a firearm at all and then 21 plus to be able to own um something that isn't a long gun so um you know one thing i would say about legality and um understanding the responsibilities attached to that is number one you know, when I was talking about looking for that local trainer, um, somebody who's familiar with local uh, and state um, laws, you know, that's that's where you'll want to start first because they're going to be the best, um, the best knowledge source to go to and say, hey, you've been doing this training for however long, you know, you understand these legalities. Uh, you can go to those people. Um, another good local resource is your police departments and, um, you know, a, a county or city level, whichever you're at, um, they always have you know, resource, most of their websites, you could go to probably any department in the, in the country and go to their website and they've got all those resources there for you as well. So, um, certainly, um, you know, if you're on the fence about ownership or, you know, you're concerned about how, how I'm able to get a concealed carry license or what that legality looks like, absolutely start at the people who enforce and know the most about that. So, um, you know, certainly reach out to your local PDs and, and ask them, go to their websites, um, most of them have uh, local resources to be able to, to reach out to and, and you know get more information. On. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, just for those folks watching, we are not giving you legal advice. Consult your attorney. But that's a great way um, to kind of start. Touch base with your um, you know your local county uh, in New York City. Obviously, it's going to be the NYPD. Um, great folks. You know, we love our police officers here um, at Guardian Group Services. We do a lot of training for them as well. Um, it's a great conversation starter and kind of building the community that you live in. doesn't matter if you're from Brooklyn, the Bronx, Staten Island, Queens, right? Um, you know, the five boroughs, we have a lot of people here, a couple of million individuals. You want to get certified. You want to get licensed. It is a process. You have to understand that, but it can be done, right? You do just have to follow those proper channels. Um, you know, whether it's a, a pistol rifle shotgun right whatever it is um that's the process right we kind of have to follow the law right a lot of people say well uh, you know i'm just gonna go to my cousin jimmy and go get my such and such and, and handle business right you want to be uh you know sane sober good mindset and you know you want to follow the law otherwise you can find yourself in legal trouble a lot of the classes here um will focus on the law right article 35 um We'll get into use of force, criminal possession, 
storage, right? Obviously, you know, if you have a weapon in the home, if you have family members or children, definitely something to consider and think about the actual home where you live, right? Um, you know, if you're cleaning your weapon, most buildings in New York City have sheetrock or glass, you know, that stuff just going straight through the walls, ceiling or the floor into your neighbor's apartment. I don't think they'd be pretty happy if they have, you know, bullet going through uh, their TV, you know, when they're trying to watch TV late at night. So definitely know your local laws, what you can and can't do. Um, but what is the safe method to do it? Um, you know, we, we have a lot of training classes here um, in the city online and in person. Um, would love to hear your thoughts. I know that you train individuals, instructors, agencies, law enforcement, military. Um, yeah. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that. I was just going to say we could really scale this question a lot of different ways, Charles. Um, you know, we get testimonials all the time, um, you know, daily, literally from um, everyday users who uh, who love to reach out and say, hey, uh, just like it describes in half of your ads, the first 20 minutes I use this, I was able to recognize patterns I was already doing wrong, but not understanding why I was doing it wrong. You know, that's that's a huge benefit of the system. Um, We've got professional shooters who use this uh, every day as well. You know, the the Michulex, both of them, uh, Lena and Jerry, both of them use this every day to continue to improve their skills. JJ Ricasa, who's, you know, a world record holder for Beretta, um, he uses this system to really fine tune in how his target to target transition is looking. Um, you know, Michelle Viscucci, another big professional shooter who's able to constantly dial in skills. We had talked earlier that uh, you know, shooting's a perishable skill and, and uh, the less you train, the less you're going to grow. So, um, you know, there's there's all the way at the elite level. We've got a special operations group, both in the Army and the Marine Corps, who are using these uh, to be able to continue to dial in their, you know, um, our, our products to be able to dial in their their proficiencies and skills. Um, you know, as an example, the, the Blackbeard, which you're not able to get out in New York, but um, is another one of our products that has the same software built in. Um, all the new recruits going through boot camp at Paris Island for the Marine Corps are using those. You know, that, that's completely, wow. completely changed grass week for them. You know, it's no more dime drills. Um, and, and their qualification scores for the people who were using the Blackbeard versus who were not using the Blackbeard increased from 70% pass to 100% pass. Um, wow. you know, as they were using our systems, not a single one of them didn't qualify as they went through dry week. So, um, yeah. Uh, is success is is something that that people are are becoming used to growing into as they as they use our stuff more you know so uh, it's definitely one of those deals where um if you want to grow if you want to know more about about your shooting fundamentals and and your habits and how to work out of those um the x-series sensors are, are truly a magnificent tool that that you can use on any platform pistol rifle shotgun um if you're an archer we have archery even so uh, we really do we, we constantly get feedback at, at how much people love our products and, and how well they they continue to grow i i just saw this morning um the stuff for the archery and i just got back into um archery i loved it it was a blast as a kid um you know go to summer camp you learn how to shoot um you know go hunting upstate i am totally all in on, on getting the archery set soon um this is and for the folks that don't know what your equipment looks like. Um, this is what I was able to purchase um, from Mantis. Really great kit, easy setup. You could throw that in your bag and literally train anywhere. Yep. Um, comes with the targets, the stands, the carrying case, everything that you need to get started. Um, there's no reason why you can't train. Um, and what you just know, up here, Charles, that was uh, the Laser Academy kit. Yep. So we essentially we we essentially run three product lines, right? We've got um, the Laser Academy kits, which you just showed. Those are a point of impact, a range simulator, um, and those are caliber specific. So the one you just pulled up there was, uh, I believe, that was the nine mil kit. Correct. Um, and how that works is, is that's a different app than the Mantis X app that we were talking about earlier. Um, and what that does is it gives you point of impact based on the smart target. Um, you had the next level training cert pistol up there uh, earlier. Yeah. Um, you know the that's got a visible laser on it that you can actually use on Laser Academy as well. Yeah. Our Blackbeards have a visible laser that you can use on it. So um, the Laser Academy is awesome. It's a great way to simulate a range and get point of impact. 
Um, and then we've got the Mantis X series. So uh, you have that X10 up. That's what is able to give you all the coaching and the feedback and the analytics. Um, and then finally, the, the Blackbeards, which is the AR-15 um, and now MCX uh, specific systems that will constantly reset the trigger and has the feedback built in. So uh, those are like the three big things we're doing right now. Um, but yeah, that Laser Academy, that's great. You can take it anywhere. You know, uh, all of our items are incredibly portable to, to allow you to, to train in any situation, any scenario, wherever you want to go. Yeah, I, I started off at the Laser Academy, you know, as I'm looking through my history now. You know, I average a score about 95. Oh, Pretty wow. Good. Yeah, that's Pretty great. Good. But when I go back to like my first weeks, I mean, literally 67, 72. I was amazed on, on how well I did, but it's just a repetition. Getting in there, you know, five minutes a day. Great to do if you have the space um, on break, before work, maybe after work. Yep. And there's so many different drills on the Laser Academy as well. Um, many of uh, my viewers probably know uh, Duck Hunt. You'll see Duck Hunt on there. I thought that was pretty cool in the Contra. The holidays are coming up. I already see you have some stuff for Halloween. For Christmas, you got Jingle Bells, Frosty the Snowman, Joy to the World, Silent Night. You got all the classics. Full yeah. Design, five shot, your 10 shot. Yeah, the, the Laser Academy has got a lot of fun things that you can do too. You know, the um, because it works off of that smart target, things like you were saying, like the Contra target, um, you know, that, that goes back, that goes back a ways. That is showing your age a little bit there. Yeah. <laughs> The, the old uh, Konami, you know, everything like that. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we've got some holiday specific stuff, you know, like three years ago, we did a Die Hard target and everybody knows Die Hard's a Christmas movie. And like, um, you know, uh, the Jingle Bells, it's, you know, like the, the Glock and Bells that you just get to shoot each bell and get a lot of, so there, there's a lot of fun things to do as well as continue to push your training. Um, I, I gotta say, uh, I'm a sucker for Die Hard, probably one of the first like real action movies I remember as a kid. The right. first thing I started doing when I got this thing. <laughs> Yippee ki <-yay. laughs> uh, So I figured, Jake, you know what? Um, you know, we went through all the questions. I know you have some stuff you might be showing off. I figured let's have a little fun. I'll, I'll show you and the viewers a video of when I first got this. Have fun with it, folks. I know the comments are going to be blowing up laughing like <laughs> there's no tomorrow on this. But um, you can kind of see what it can do. Don't use me as a model or, or an example. Get the equipment, folks. Buy it, train it, use it. Really, really cool stuff. Had a short little video.
Got to say, unfortunately, that hostage did not make it. I mean, uh, it was just terrible. Oh, my God. Uh, but I guess I had a lot of fun with it, you know, just kind of tracking the stats. Um, you know, that was just like one whole week in the beginning when I first got this. You know, um, literally went from like a 62 to a 74 to an 89 to now like a 92, you know, 95. Uh, I got to say, like, when I was creating it, like, I knew I was doing it for this content. Watching the video, like, oh, my God, I really need to do a lot of training also need to get a little more fit uh, just got to stay um, in the zone with training you know it's a big responsibility you know to carry a weapon um so if you're going to do that your skills better be up to par um also if you're kind of getting into that lifestyle what i realized too is you got to have the appropriate gear appropriate clothing and a proper belt depending on how you're going to carry that that weapon um, you know, watching the video, I think I flagged myself like five or six times. Definitely would have shot myself in the stomach and the thigh and the foot. Um, you know, so some of my goals, you know, get a little slimmer, you know, get into training a little bit more, um, and just literally get in the constant habit of training. Um, the stuff at nighttime really threw me off as well. So I was like, you know, let me do the nighttime drill. Cause that's what the, the daily drill was. The target was five yards out. Uh, so my apartment, I just killed all the lights, you know, except for my kitchen. And I was like, you know, dang, I, I might need a flashlight for my weapon. So now I got to think about, you know, that as an encounter. Um, but I really love the feedback and, and the tracking and the analytics on that. Literally, if, if you're, you know, limping the weapon or, or you're, you know, pressing incorrectly, it's going to tell you. Um, so you're going to get that instant feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest, Charles, yeah, there were some funny moments watching you through there. Um, but, but you're right. You know, it, it's a, it's a great, it's a great way to learn from, from yourself, you know? Um, and that's something that a lot of people don't think of a lot of is, um, I know that you're getting some filming in to be able to, you know, help set up for the podcast and get everything going. But the reality is, is like being able to watch yourself make those mistakes. What a huge learning, you know, lesson that yeah. is to be able to go like, oh man, um, not only do I get the feedback, I can open up, you know, those red wedges when you're looking at the average screen, I can open that up and it goes, oh, well, I'm using too much trigger finger or I'm pushing with my support hand. Um, that's why all of my shots are going high and right. Uh, whatever seems to be happening there as you film yourself and you watch yourself go through those, then it's, then it's another way to go. Oh yeah. I, I saw myself do it right there, you know, uh, or I saw this going on with my stance or, uh, just like you said, um, when I was struggling to get my holster going correctly, it's maybe because I wasn't using uh, the correct gear. You know, I, I wasn't focusing on visually inspecting the holster as I as I put my firearm away. You know, all those things. It, it really it, it leads you into that thought process, that thinking of constantly growing and training. Um, so no, I thought that was fantastic and uh, a really good way to see not only how does our stuff work, but how do you improve? You know, how how do we make this better? So. Um, I thought that was great, man. Uh, you did a good job there. <laughs> no. yeah, day, day, day two or three, I almost lost my cool. I, was just, <laughs> I could uh, not that I couldn't hit the target. I just couldn't get the weapon out into the fight to hit the target at first, which really threw me off. Like, wow, if this was a real encounter, I'd be in some serious trouble. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. You know, really, really cool stuff. And, you know, the as you said, too, I thought this was probably the most helpful piece of uh, the training. You know, for me, it seems a lot of the issues that I ran into kind of fall around the breaking of the wrist um, and slapping the trigger, uh, yep. which I was able to kind of fix, you know, over the past couple of days. And then once I did that, you know, doing the primary hand drills, the support hand drills, just kind of got me into a groove of, you know, this is what I need to do every single time uh, the weapon comes into the fight. Yeah. Um, and it, it also goes to highlight why, oh, and I was actually, this is a perfect, perfect, perfect question to lead into, uh, tips for new shooters. Um, you know, what I was going to highlight here is, is why dry fire is so important. And this is a great tip for all new shooters. Um, you know, you'll see online that some people claim like, Hey, you need to be doing just as many dry presses as you are live presses. Or, you know, some people say you need to be doing 10 times as many dry presses before you do live presses. Um, but the reality here is, is, you know, 90% of the shot happens before the round ever leaves the muzzle. All right. If you had a poor stance, if you had an improper grip, if you're pulling the trigger incorrectly, 
Um, you know, if your site picture is not correct, any one of those factors or a combination of those factors is going to make sure that you have a bad shot or you miss or you're not trying to hit precisely what you're aiming at. Um, so as, as a huge tip, get your dry fryer presses in, get the feedback you need every time you're pulling the trigger. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that that's that's a huge one is is being able to get a good grip, a good trigger press, a good posture in a good sight picture um, b before the round ever leaves the muzzle. So some people will come back and say, uh, well, then you don't have recoil mitigation. Um, you know, that's that's the beauty of the X10. Get your dry presses in and then take the X10 with you to the range. You're already going to burn that ammo. You're spending that money uh, as it was anyway. You might as well get the feedback you need while you're also doing that. So, um, yeah, realistically, absolutely get the dry fryer presses in, um, it, especially if you're learning and growing as a new shooter. I, I think it, it's funny you say that, too. The two big things that someone mentioned to me right away, with, you know, when they were helping film it, stance. I, I had a very difficult time of just kind of getting in the right stance. You know, I didn't really have my um, lead foot forward. Just kind of, you know, stood there in a box. Literally, anybody could take two fingers and just push me down, no problem. Once I fixed that, the, the next issue, which took a little time, sight alignment and sight picture. Um, and that just kind of comes with practice. Once you get that, man, you start getting in the zone. Um, and then it becomes fun, right? You know, training should be fun. And you kind of have to take a look at yourself when you're doing this is you're trying to get better. It's not you versus me. It's you versus you. And did you do better than yesterday? Right. Yep, exactly. That's exactly right. Uh, Jake, do you have any cool equipment, toys, gear you want to show off? Uh, you know, uh, other than um, other than the, the Blackbeards, which is uh, something we, we've talked about a little bit, um, yeah. but, but haven't been able to actually be able to get out there. Um, that That's definitely something that I, I think sharing would be neat. Um, uh, other than that, I, I really think you, you've brought up everything, um, that is important to us and, and that does push us as shooters, you know, the, the X10, I, I cannot stress enough how important that system is. Um, there's nothing else like it, um, not only in the world, but, but in the market, which is more important. And, um, you know, uh, the reality is, is if, if you want to grow and become more proficient, and be able to get the training in that you want every day, that system is gonna be the way to go. Um, you know, I can't say enough good things about it. And then um, secondly, the the Laser Academy, it is great. It's an awesome way to simulate a range. It's an awesome way to see point of impact on target uh, without going to the range. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a really cool system to be able to use. Um, so it, it definitely adds to the experience for sure. But um, yeah, that those are, you know, I, I couldn't say anything better. You had them both in the video. You, you're able to actually show how they work. So um, I think you absolutely did an awesome job on that, Charles. You know, one of the things that I like, which is actually right behind you on your virtual screen, is the actual setup. Um, you set up everything for yourself. Are you left-handed or right-handed, dry fire? Um, everything is there. Um, and it's a very, very easy setup, folks. Definitely check it out. Um, in our link at the end of the video, we're going to have the Mantis information so people can purchase it um sign it up um we're going to be doing a giveaway i don't think i had a chance to tell you um we're going to pick a random winner probably around the end of the year as a nice little holiday gift so you know folks comment down below why you'd like to have it how you're going to use it for training um we're going to choose a lucky winner at the end of this year get in there it's on us we're paying for it Best of luck to the winners. All you gotta do is hop in and comment. Check this thing out. You know, um, I tell that's you what. what yeah, it. yeah. For how for how awesome these these systems are, I that's absolutely something you want to jump on and, and save a couple bucks, but have a sweet tool to be having in your arsenal to keep training with. You know, I I, I did not know, and I would love to see some video later down the road. I'm gonna go check this out. You know, with the uh, military training applications. You know, I, I love my military folks. Eleven Bravo. Um, you know, down south great time but yeah that's some really cool stuff i want to check that out that's going to be interesting yeah for sure i i cannot believe that uh uh i i didn't know you were a you were an infantryman and, and you know in, in the army that's awesome and and by the way i saw the folded flags in your video on your mantle place you know that's um that's something i have a huge amount of respect for um so again thank you charles i, I really appreciate that 
Um, I was an you. Intel guy, so I, I never did any of that crazy boots on the ground stuff. So I've got a huge amount of respect for guys that do that. I, you know, we all, we joke around all of us, you know, um, when we were going in, we got suckered in by the recruiter. You know, <laughs> I want to do this. I want to do that. No, nah, you're going to do this. This is what yeah. you're going to do. Uh, Jake, we always like to end our videos with a little bit of fun. I got a little this or that I'm going to throw at you. So I'll ask you a couple of questions. You just tell me the first thing that comes to mind. All right. The game. All right. So who wins in a battle? John Wick or James Bond? Oof, that's pretty easy, honestly. Um, there's only one John Wick. There's been like nine different Bonds, and uh, the reality is, is John Wick's a monster. He does real training, and you know James Bond is. Uh, he's teched up. He's paid to win. He's got he's got all the you know all the special gadgets and stuff behind him. So John Wick all day on that one. Yeah, I totally agree. Cop. Ooh, McLean. Mm, that's a tough one, actually. Um, you know, initially, I'm just gonna go McLean. Like he's definitely got more grit than Dirty Harry does, and uh, he's got more rounds in the magazine. Whereas, you know, Dirty Harry's only got a cylinder. So, um, yeah, we'll go McLean on that one. All right, for a fun one, you know, had to do um, Riggs or okay. Frank Castle or Punisher. Castle. <laughs> oh boy, uh, I'm not a I'm not a huge like Punisher fan, man, but. Uh, Frank Castle, as far as the comics are concerned, and I guess in the movie, ton of grit, and uh, uh, and the dude is driven by uh, revenge and the love of his family. So I'm just gonna go with Frank Castle on that one. I'm, I'm a big fan of Riggs, I and mean, that's some great movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, fan fiction. Here's another one for you. Who wins, Ripley Ooh. or Sarah Connor? Mm, 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 mm. That's a tough one. Sarah Connor, she's tough to kill, you know, like, and uh, she took on all of Skynet and also birthed, like, the meanest dude to ever exist on the planet as far as that canon's concerned. So I'd say Sarah Connor on that one. Totally agree, yeah. <laughs> Ripley's a tough one. She fought yeah. the male, but yeah. Sarah Connor, I think, took on a little bit more. All right, team battle. You get a bunch of guys together. Mm. Who wins? <laughs> Who wins are hot fuzz. <laughs> That's a hard one. I love both of those sets of people. Um, only because we've only seen one really in action versus the other ones who were more, you know, goofy. Um, I'm going to take the Hot Fuzz team, but I will say I love the Super Troopers quite a bit. Um, I just think the Hot Fuzz has had, like, the bigger, scarier, took on the whole town and we're actually racked out plus like the chain meme is like one of my favorite memes ever yeah. so, uh. I, I would say i mean i like them both movie wise i love super troopers hot fuzz i think they got a little more tactical edge yeah exactly exactly but i do All love right. super troopers that, that movie was hilarious and uh one last one so everybody kind of knows my age the battle of the ages as always mm -hmm. who is alone or short? not even close arnold all day arnold all arnold. day yeah arnold, don't get me wrong i love me some rambo like i i love rambo i love rocky uh actually you know i've got both of the collections here um i just don't think you can touch arnold as far as like who is you know who is the <laughs> like stereotypical 80s super you know super awesome macho guy i think it's gonna be arnold all day uh, that's gonna probably cause a couple of fights and gun battles in the comments <laughs> i think <laughs> uh jake man listen it's been a blast i really really appreciate you and everybody at mantis coming together to um, not only help me but just help the community train better do better uh really we really, really appreciate you and everybody uh, Charles, I, I can I couldn't thank you enough, man. This is this has been a great show. Uh, really love doing it with you. We love the opportunity to get on here and to be able to talk about our stuff. And um, you know, you setting us up to to have such good examples to be able to talk about. It's, it's been fantastic, man. Um, definitely, you guys go check out Guardian. Go get some you know classes booked. Get in there, get your training, um, and then uh, once you've gotten a good stable base from Guardian, go ahead and get some Mantis so that you can keep your stuff tuned in and keep running. Now, if anybody remembers, like I said, comment down below why you want a freebie. You're going to win in this giveaway. Somebody's going to be a lucky winner. Could be you. Um, we've got a shooting group as well. Jake, maybe you want to join us. It's Guardian Group Services. We'll probably okay. blow past all of us and 
anybody else that purchases this, join our shooting group as well. Awesome. Um, it's fun to kind of match up against each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll uh, I'll hop in there and see if uh, see if I can try and run you guys down at all. Absolutely. It'll, it'll probably take me and Bruce and the whole team here to catch up to how many shots you guys do on a daily basis. But we'll see. We'll see. Jake, thank you so much. Uh, wish you and everybody the best over there at your crew. Stay safe. Stay alert. Stay alive. Thanks, you guys. Take it easy. I, I really appreciate it. Take care. <laughs>